Hello, hello. My name is Alexander, and today we're gonna review what went wrong with Unsip Gaming when he played on DDs here. So, I actually did hit a bit of an analysis here, and what I can tell here is that, for one, he doesn't know much about how the fundamentals of the game work and how to fully utilize them. I'll show you how to fully utilize them. So the goals that you should really be focusing in here. So one of the goals was here for a newbie DD player here is that you are gonna need it to have a library in all all cities by tur around turn 175 if you're going for a pre-turn 200 style science victory run in order to be ahead of everyone in scientifically very very early on I mean it's too advanced for you but if if you want you can try and oh wait I just revealed my eyes t to everyone here <laughs> if you want and you can try and get a library by around t on turn 50 to 60 and then work on the National College from here. Your other goal here is to work your luxuries in, in all of your cities ASAP for happiness reasons. And goal here is Diplo Balance. And, and for vast much. I mean, for all these goals here that you need to excel here on D, you're you're failing them spectacularly. And the goal here for worker one worker per city, I only seem to have one worker here. I'll judge you on your playstyle over here a, a bit, and you seem to have a bit of a speed running type of playstyle here. You just typically let the game stuff for you while you do all the warm in here. I mean, by now, you, I really should have expected you to uh, be a bit of a Julius Caesar or, or unsif Julius Caesar at, at fighting, but no, you're still running your units into the AI's units here. I will talk about in depth about what each of these goals mean here. Okay, I also took notes here by turn 160, so around turn 5 to 31 here, you who claim that in order to beat a quote deity, if you need to be a technologically advanced here. I mean, you seem to have a bit of the concept of attacks here. You understand that more cities equals more science equals more tech, but I don't think you know that science buildings exist. Let me show you. So the foundation of science here uh, will come from your population here. Er, also, your palace in the capital city, which is going to give you three is science here, so... Oh, Moscow oh, oh, has five population, which means it's gonna have like around eight signs by now. And since it has a library, it, it you know, once one plus one signs will be added per two population. It's highly recommended to we'll get a library in a city that has at least three population. You also don't seem to have a concept of population. I mean, you need. I mean, it's common sense by now, oh, even for my age, that it's from a rules for rules perspective. You rely on the people to work here. Huh? So, so well, yeah, I'll be explaining these concepts here. I'm for now. I'm explaining in science building. So. The library is a science building that you can get by just heading straight towards riding early on. One. 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 And also by t around turn 
48 to 50, you complain about uh, being out tech or uh, otherwise. I have a problem here. There are more technological advancement. Yeah. I mean, dude. D compared to who prints here. Uh, the AI has a really, really significant advantage. It's compared to who against you. Compared to on a difficulty like Prince or Warlord. Really? On Prince, you are on par with the AI. On Deity, yeah, the AI is gonna uh, have much faster city growth. Of much cheaper units, much cheap, uh, cheaper production costs for buildings. I.e., build the AI is gonna build all the buildings and wonders faster. Their unit maintenance is a lot less. So, oh, even the if the AI has literally a, a carpet of doom heading against you, oh, they can and literally. They can literally have a, a underpaid militia here. That's what I'm getting from on the AI settings here. Uh, its maintenance modifier is uh, is basically at half. I'm really, really surprised that the AI's build holdings haven't even fall, uh, fallen or crumbled. Hold <laughs> also, their ha AI happiness modifier is around 0 0.6. So basically, the AI plays as if if they're on settler difficulty here, uh, but with the the AI, AI here, you gotta be thankful that that the uh, the AI here is is it's really really stubborn in here. Or they randomly they just randomly choose buildings here. I mean, with this uh, new updated. It's spectator mode mode here. Spectators are setting. You can actually you get to know oh the AI's decisions, but I'm not gonna get into the video here. Uh, anyways, back to the topic of science and buildings things here, which the AI it seems to randomly choose whether or not to pick on science. And they seem to have a high pop population city for, is for some reason. And then, and then, that the National College is going to give you extra uh, sci uh, science. And many, many guides and many, many, many tips and tricks videos will tell you to uh, have a National College by around turn 100. But, but if you're a skilled very very skilled a player that's trying to do a quick victory have a, a national cost by around turn 60 to just to around 75 if you can have have a national college a bit later than turn 100 but you can need a national college by around on turn 100 so have your libraries by around turn 5 and then build the national college from there Another way you can get science from on the tech tree is universities. It's gonna uh, boost your science by 33%, and it's gonna add two science from jungle tiles if you know how to work like them. Um, observatories do indeed exist on on Civ Gaming, and if you've researched astronomy and double tap your cities. Scroll down, look in the queue, and if you see something that says observatory with the observatory icon here, yes, that that does indeed it exist. On so, another building thing that really really gives you science here is public school. Well, switch group build three plus science and one plus science per two population. So it's basically a lie. A yeah, free, a great library that you, you can build in every city. A late game great library, yeah, but without the free tech. 
Maybe you can get from the sign. Here we are. The National Wonder here or that you're going to need to will build is Oxford University, also known as Oxford for short. Here, build it in your capital. Manually build it for once, and and it's gonna boost your science up in your capital by fifty percent. And there's uh, and the last. The last building that solely boosts your science here is the research lab, which will grant you plus 50% science in your city and plus for science. And yes, wonders do indeed give you well, science and and great scientists is if you build them, but wonders on the here the, uh, wonder building can be a very un unreliable unless if you are as lucky as as me then and well let's just say the AI here is not very wonder competitive up here I wonder if my AI here is broken on the topic of population it's it's what that helps you Population is one of the f foundations of of your lovely, lovely little uh, nation or empire. Here, how does population work? Well, it wor it works by yeah working tiles, and you can tell if a population is working in tiles here, or, or by yeah whether or not that the tile yields and the citizens here are. Are glowing. So if you unwork a, a tile, it just goes back to a darker, transparent he see stuff here. But what I've noticed from you on this is that, that since you don't know how population works, you tend to place great people in places is where uh, there's no population working here. If I were you, who well, Oh, and if I, you know that I, I'm gonna move a great scientist or whatever great improvement over here. I can just double tap on the city, reassign my hey, population here like this. And oh, and by the way, once you unassign your population, there's, and you can tell which population. How much population you can reassign, and how do you reassign in your population? Unassigned population. Well, for one thing, unassigned population just gives you just plus one production. Oh look, there's a call all above for, for my mom. I get in anyways. You work your, t you tap on a, a semi-transparent, dimmed out. Oh, tile you t a tile. For example, this food seems a bit dim and transparent. How about I work the tile? And since it it grants me more food, it literally has boosted me from starvation. And I should have three food by now, but since I'm on the hap happiness as of now, oh, oh, food growth is gonna uh, uh, be. Thirty three percent food growth effectiveness of all these cities are gonna be it down to a third of its usual growth here. So, oh, I'm at one food instead of three. But you get the point here. You can also assign population to what it's you like to call. Slotty thing is our in games. For me, it's in game spe specialist slots. Not only they, they grant you free yeah, culture or production money, etc. Uh, here, but you can actually work to um, to get free and some free great people here. You just have to uh, build the specialist buildings associated with. The, the special 
and with the great person that you want to churn out. For example, here, since you're on duty here, you're gonna need to work great scientists, and great scientists will grant you a cat a maze, use or har hurrying research if you use them. And academies is well, and I can't placing academy tiles else if you're working a citizen or population here on the academy tile, it will, will grant you well, around eight science. But at, if you research a scientific theory already, the uh, a tile that the the uh, population here is working on here will grant you 10 science. The same principle goes for, for all the other great uh, people here. If you uh, are working a lot on, cu on culture uh, specialist slots here via uh, buildings like the temple, the the opera house and the museum. Then it will grant you oh, great artist points. If you're uh, working uh, some specialist slots, if you're assigning populations into specialist slots on this blue stuff towards the, the extra three science you're gonna get here from working the said specialist slot, then you will get extra. S uh, great scientist points, etc., etc. Here, so if I work, I get some extra production here. We uh, the special slot here, then you will get extra uh, great engineer points. So you're getting me now. I hope you are getting me. Oh, I'm so getting. Oh, and by the way, if you We've already worked on on economic buildings, eh, such as the market, and it will grant you one merchant specialist slot. So you can unassign in your population here by pressing the minus button here. And since you have extra unassigned population here, you can reassign to either your tiles. Glow, unglow, or you can and reassign it to one of your specialist slots, and and if you what's tap on the plus sign, it'll assign in the specialist is toward as the uh, specialist slot at, into the specialist building here, and since you're working on a gold special. Actually, this slot for via the market. You're gonna get some extra uh, great merchant points. And what do these great people do? Great, great engineers. Once you, and once you will have enough uh, specialist points. In reduce towards them, I can either speed up the construction of a wonder or, or construct a fact manufacturing tile, which will, will enable you to get eight production from the tile. Oh, if only you knew how to work the tile here. For example, if if you place a manufacturing right here on this tile, here onto. In order for the city to have extra production or, or to build all the stuff that you want to build faster, just reassign your population to work the tile here in order for the tile to be effective. Uh, it's just that simple on save here. Okay, I think I've understood. I think I sh it provides you the concepts that you need to learn in order to be the the heres. But the one concept that I really should talk to you about is is the technology here, the, te the technology tree. 
And yes, I, I did create a reconstruction of the um, a map seed you're playing on, on here just by using the map editor and your her video. Well, it's what you think it's impressive. <laughs> and anyway, so I decided to make a new map out of this and then fill everything in. Speaking of the map. Once again, you actually chose this uh, cell on the uh, hill here. They, uh, judging by your selling location, the hill's gonna uh, provide you extra production in the long term and extra bombardment strength in case, in case your capital decides to get shanked by uh, the AI's union units. It's there's two luxuries in the range and there's sheep, so it's a really decent selling lo location here. And and we're gonna go on the topic of of the, t the tech here. What does this ha this have to do with the, the technology tree? Uh, well, even a simple old person would know that that in order to maximize is the is the advantages the technology tree gives you? You need to research what you need, not because why not here. I've seen you research sailing and, and optics, even though you weren't even on the coast, close to the east. Is yes. yes, any skilled player would know all that. You don't need sailing because as you don't need trireens, there's no. Uh, or tile, ocean tile improvements you need to improve with fishing boats. You're not, you haven't sailed on the coast, so oh, you don't need lighthouses. Houses. It's, so, to simplify, you, you know, to truly yeah, yeah, utilize is, and use the technology he, tree. Yeah. At its full potential and properly, yeah, yeah, playing it right, it using it right here. Research what you need here. For example, here, I have incense and sugar. I need luxuries ASAP early on here, and they require, they each require. Uh, plantations here, so and calendar uh, uh, grants me the ability to uh, improve these tiles with the plantation here. Uh, so, oh, uh, calendar is a technology that I need. If a AI here is trying to uh, uh, conquer you and take you over, then research art. Archery, since it's gonna grant you archers, you discovered rather very quickly how important archers, or more specifically, range use are on deity. Mining, if you want extra production on your city very, very quickly, research mining, it grants you the mine. Do you want to improve this sheep tile? Wake up, sheep hole! Oh, research animal husbandry. Because it grants you the pasture, and if you want and to work this this pa pasture with your uh, worker doing all the work for you, then research animal husbandry for the pasture, so your automating worker will eventually work the tile here. And speaking of automation here, with your speed running place to here, I discovered very quickly that automating workers will only work like the yeah, population tiles first, and then and they will work on other tiles also here. Right. For example, if this sheep tile is being worked by a population here that the game automatically assigned for you, then chances are a a worker that you already put on automation is gonna uh, go towards the tile. Oh, here.
go on and on for uh, a bunch of examples for researching what you need, not because why not. That's here. I mean, I don't get why you research sailing and optics when you're not even on the coast. <laughs> and so that's what the AI would do here. The AI here in this game is designed for us players to have fun. I mean, and if, if they were smart, they would have eradicated us a long time ago, and us players wouldn't even have fun here. The AI is designed to be yeah, dumb here on the gaming. Why do you choose to uh, do oh, decisions the uh, AI would do? Oh. <laughs> oh. And I figure out the reason why. You clearly don't understand the fundamentals and the basics of the game. I mean, you. I can compare you to a child oh, that hasn't been taught anything their entire lives and they're immediately lost once they're out in the real world out here on gaming you need guidance after my reconstruction of the map you were playing on here on save I managed to accomplish my goals here for or once I have four workers I have four cities is, and I'm about to have a library in all my cities by around turn 60s. I have one worker per s or city. I have four cities, four or workers, and I'm about to get my fifth one on Rostov in, in turns. I'm trying to work my luxuries like eh, as fast as, as possible here. Huh? The reason why... Yeah, it's because it's, it's for happiness. You need happiness in order to grow your population here. Uh, instead of working popular stuff like production, why not work these t tiny units with two food instead of one food or no food at all? Oh my goodness. Yes, I have 11 and turns instead of the standard 21 turns in order to grow popular in here. Uh, uh, the more population the grow, you grow in the long long run, eh, later on the, in the game, the more science you will get. Have a priority on food production uh, and work the tiles that, that yield the most food in quantity. You know, oh, a great exa example here. This is a really great example of what you sh really should be doing here. I mean, do you even know what diplomacy is besides declaring war and trading the in resources for the air here? From one of the guides, if you don't know how to trade properly here, you will lose the game. You will. You need to know how diplomacy tab here works. If your relationship is at, at a positive 15 here with the AI here, the your relationship with the AI here becomes favorable. I know some people will say that at declarations of friendship once you're at fav favorable uh, relationship is useless, but it can actually yeah, help. It really help you. Or get research agreement and and, and uh, reduce the likelihood uh, or or chance that the AI here will declare war on on you. So declarations of friendship here, or uh, uh, it's in my eyes it's still useful. Or well, here, trade. You just click here. And you can set your items here on the table, or here. Heck, you can even bribe civilizations into war with each other if you have enough stuff. You can also trade cities, but I'm not sure if trading cities away is gonna be you know, really of use to you. Oh, unless if you 
or really want to suicide your own civilization. You gotta at least know the costs us and cost of what the AI would perceive from each thing you're trying to trade with them. For example, if you're trading luxuries, then at base value, they are willing to accept around 250 gold for each luxury. 250 gold's worth, so if you can calculate the amount of gold per turn here uh, for each luxury resource, First here on quick speed, it's around, around, around eight, like or um, around ten here. On standard, I think it's it's around six, around eight to six gold per turn. I don't, don't know. On marathon here, or it. It's around two gold per turn because it's it's gonna be one gold for ninety turns here. For strategic resources, the uh, one of the guides here said at every strategic resource here will uh the AI is willing to give you two gold per turn each, but two strategic resources will yes, the AI is willing to receive. Well, it's willing to give you like three gold per turn on standard speed, so the guides recommend you to strategically trade your resources. One, one here, but I really don't get one. The AI doesn't accept my trades here. Yes, you can trade gold per turn, and for. Or loaning gold purposes, but you don't want to go too crazy on the gold loaning. You might want to well, save your gold per turn for main or maintaining your buildings and units purposes. The guys do say to constantly he do this, but but be mindful, be careful about. Out your strategically loaning with the AI here. You don't want to go into treasury deficit here. If you you're in debt, you the game will automatically disband units. It's and you will lose your army here. And plus, your science is gonna drop down to zero. A lot eventually, if you don't unsolve your debt problem. The topic of denouncing. So you you can denounce on you can only denounce on if you can only denounce a nation if you've not denounced them um, for the past thirty turns or your her declaration of friendship has expired heard from thirty turns ago. Denouncing can actually be used. It fall here since it's really, really uh, comparatively it reduces the penalties of you declaring war on a civilization to others. For example, if I declare war on Ch China, for instance, there will be a, your war in Mongolia's ways will be unacceptable to us, and a, you declared war or, or on us. Per Penalty to the AI that you will really, really, yeah, yeah, declared war on. What's even a bigger penalty here is that that you'll have a your so-called friendship is worth nothing penalty. So now make sure. So, long story short, make sure to de denounce before declaring war on a civilization, so your warmongering penalties are, are a lot less. Instead of the standard two turns it takes for, for me to what, or decay this penalty, diplomatic penalty, Oh no T here. Alright. It takes one turn. That's the effectiveness of denouncing a nation.
Now for the topic of declaring war. I mean, it's pretty obvious here, but you can at least have a reason for a war, a bit of a justification. Do you want to conquer the civilization? Do you want their resources? Do you want to weaken them? Do you want more territory for your, your endless this void it uh it ends satisfaction and this endless desire to conquer those are the reasons that that you want to declare war or on the other civilization here but also there's a really really slick way of using this war or declaration here right around the range of of turn Earn 0 to 30 here. If you hope manage to find one of your or rival civilizations in its workers, you can actually do a couple of worker steals very early on. Be smart about where you steal because it's, you might lose your unit It's and in the long term. Later on in the game, if you keep your warrior here, it will turn into infantry and mechanized infantry. And plus, it will, will enable you to capture cities since you need it mainly to capture cities. So, just gonna move one tile in. And declare war. And by stealing these workers, you save like 10 turns and to work these workers. If you manage to add, you'll steal at least two workers from these civ uh, from these rival nations, then you will weaken them um, permanently throughout the game. In here, I mean, I just did the same thing with Siam. I tried to do the same thing with, with Siam here, and they eventually he got wiped out the, from the map. Up. Because Siam is weakened, and the other civilizations decide to gangbang and, and declare war on Siam. And look at Thailand now. They're on under Chinese and Persian rule. I mean, most prefer like Persian rule. Well, I mean, you get to keep your culture for the most part. On the topic for negotiating peace, so you can only select this option, and ten turns after you declare war on the nation that you plan to go to war with, make sure you're prepared. Or with some units, unless if you plan on worker stealing very early on in the game. Hmm. So, uh, oh, negotiating peace here uh, is it's a very very useful tool since if you manage to. Who cripples civilization's army? His military strength to virtually nothing. If you match, it will put it to zero right here. Then, and they will offer you literally everything. Ing, ing. Negotiating peace here is really a useful for another thing, and that is to sign white peace and make sure the AI doesn't attack you or or kill you off, off, or more importantly, pillage your tile improvements. I mean, you need your tile improvements in order to work to. Uh, Will grow your civilization and build old units faster. I mean, three food is better than two. Oh, 
Well, you can't argue against that. And what I mean by title use here is title improvement and so yeah, right, that's how mo all important workers are here in on stuff here. They make your cities stronger right, and more or populated. Negotiating peace will only l after you negotiate peace with a civilization it will and or any nation in the game, the peace will, will last up to 10 turns unless if you manage to plan to cut the trade deal with the AI here. I mean, peace trees are technically trades. I mean, you can literally cut them um, off here unless if you want to build yourself time to prepare for another potential war. Depending on the outcome of the war, or depending on on which side has the most units destroyed, it the AI it will either accept just as peace in general, or or they will demand they they will are willing to demand and or or take some of your stuff if you put some some stuff on the table for them. So, if you're on the winning side, they're willing to give you some of your stuff, some of their stuff. If you're on the losing side, they, they want some of your stuff in return for, and as a reward. The topic of demands here. Now, this is one of the biggest reasons and why he, you lost us here and went wrong on Didi here. Uh. Uh, you match the forward cell the, the AI here, uh, uh, but with the demand option here, uh, uh, if you try to oh, in, what, demand the AI to not sell any seeds is near you, they will just like, say no unless if you oh this oh siege and raise oh, eastern newly founded cities they found it. Near you, then they will be more likely to accept, unless if they, yeah, if they, they hate you, and if they know they that they, they will win the war, huh? They will, will ex, wait, they will not accept your demand here on deity. So on some game, do you get? At the fundamentals and basics of of using the diplomacy tab, did I talk too fast? I know I can talk a bit fast. By the way, I almost forgot. Not here. Gold return with golden treasury. I mean, you just have to well, calculate gold return compared to gold in treasure here. So yeah, but depending on the gold return here, here's the bit of a form. What? Uh, so, uh, it's uh, so gold per turn times the amount of turns and in the trade equals uh, the gold okay. the gold that you will get in a trade. For example, in twenty five turns with gold two gold per turn, I will get fifty gold, and and thus the AI is willing to give me fifty gold or less. That's here. That's just a bit of a bit basic if you know a bit of quick maths. But eh, next step of gaming with your playstyle here, it might be a bit of a detriment here that you are making the game do stuff for you. I mean, in, in AI, you can literally beat you. AI is smart and all, but AI is designed not to be. Nation has not designed not to be smart and worker AI is just as well. Uh, worker AI is is not the uh, best, yes, but uh, I heard in in the civilization series that it's terrible. Well, but I think in this is fan game here that the worker AI is just decent. 
when it's on automation. But, but if you know the that the a game is gonna do the stupid decisions along the way, it, uh, it more than and and the decisions that you're gonna uh, make. If you, you know that you're gonna make smart decisions that in the game, then you should just ditch ditch some of your uh, speed running. Let the game do stuff for you, play stuff all here, because it's not going to work on the, the uh, uh, if the, the auto assign city production and the, and the AI just has, assigns you a, a wonder instead of a library when you need a library right around turn 50 to 75. In order to do just that here. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm so good at gaming. Yeah. Yeah. You can still automate it here, but in not in the way that you would think here. Hold up, I just gotta charge my phone real quick. Okay, so well, in go into the option menu, scroll down to gameplay options, say yes to idle units. It's Say no to us assigned city protection, say no to all, all built roads, and the only thing that I ain't know oh, is th that you can still oh, use automations. The only automation that I, I think you can still use is is work all worker automation here. For instance, it really saves you time here, and and you're gonna work these tiles anyways here. So unless if you need to do something real quick like make a fort or or remove a force or jungle t or tile manually then it's then work on automation is gonna say if you love time here you should actually manually build roads manual in at the beginning of the game the first one turns manually yeah, or actually yeah you know I I think I know you know oh, that English is not your first language here. Oh wait, I gotta save this recording re quick. Okay, anyways, here, so, oh, that's, oh, you're gonna actually have to, oh, that's what I was saying, you got gonna actually have to ditch some of your old place down here in a, to, who have a bit of a, a favorable a place down here that will help you survive on, the idea here, which is to actually do everything that the game does for you, the, which includes assigning city production here by adding stuff onto the queue, you working some tunnel improvements in the first 100 turns, and manually building roads. I mean. In the worker AI, it might make an expensive r road here where, where it's gonna cost you like f five maintenance here instead of four here. So the worker AI might it w work a road here where there's literally an extra uh, road here that that you really need to remove here. I mean, roads aren't cheap to main maintain here. Uh, they they have transportation and upkeep. Roads here, or if you manage to build a road from your capital to all of the or other cities, you will get extra income um, here and gold return here. Or so, well, it's highly recommended to build roads when you have at uh, at least your standard for her studies is so you notice that what so one of the things that you might notice here is that I don't have any s cities settled close to the AI now why don't I settle cities close to the AI here well for one thing that you figure out really quickly is that they will declare war on you immediately now, I figured why the AI would declare 
war on you while I, as a DD player, er, just get demanded to not sell any more cities it's near me. And I think it's because, a, a, it's for me, it's luck. I have a lucky charm. He, her, her, her B respects mainly because I fought off a quote war by literally enslaving one of their populace is into my it lands and it's from the other rival all nations and, and and C I have a respectable sized army. Now for you on gaming, I don't think you actually knew what you were getting yourself into because what you just done here, you just triggered the, the AI here. I mean, how would you like it with the AI cells in next to you? You would be really, really irritated and a bit mad and sad that the AI is near you. But for the, the AI here, if you sell near them, they will... Th there's a chance that they will throw a hissy fit and just declare war immediately. So that's why you don't want to settle, or at least settle or cl or close to them. Now how do you not do that? Well, give... or well, have a bit of a bit of space between in the city here where the AI can easily settle another city. So basically, th three borders away. Three tiles, three unclaimed tiles away from the rival or uh, uh, civilization you're uh, playing against. Now, in the case that you actually know what you're getting yourself into, you have your uh, early military. Yeah. And you who oh, are uh, are having some dirty, 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 yeah, plans, and to oh, cripple the AI's military. Whatever the, the reason you're oh, settling in, in near the, the AI here, if the AI demands and and to not settle any in new cities near us, then accept the uh, demand here and don't. Fo don't settle near um, for uh, diplomacy purposes because if you will settle near them, then and you have a negative penalty yeah, yeah, relation, uh, you have a negative modifier right here saying that and you refuse to stop like say it's near are you near them. But if you fulfill your promise, then you have a positive modifier with them. I mean, in a, if you will sell soon near them, they will hate hate you slightly more, and they will hate you even more if you oh, don't if you continue to sell near them, um, even more. I mean, I think they will trust you if you fulfill your promise here, but in general, uh, long story short, try not to settle near civilization, and if you know what you're doing and you settle near them, then accept their demand and still try not to settle near or, or other AIs on deity. Now, to be honest, I actually don't know what happens next. After you will have this positive modifier, if you can and actually it continues to settle cities near them or not, but I still would highly advise against and settling near them since they will just as really really not like you who wants you who will settle all near them. So yeah. Okay, so I I think that's it for this video here, so...
Well, I hope this helped you on of gaming. And for what went wrong for the first 60 turns, if you want, if you want me to do like, like two other videos on, or maybe an extra one on, on the, on turns 61 to 170. One, you can always ask in the comments below. So. Also, if any of your local viewers are watching this, then please make sure to like and subscribe, and see you guys next time. Goodbye!